the lies told by dealer finance officers. And unfortunately, it's going to be a lengthy list and needs a little bit of a setup. Buckle up, friends, because dealer finance officers play a significant role in the car buying process, especially when it comes to financing and insurance options, which is why the office is called F&I. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, and joining me across the way is the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Today, we're going to teach you about the tactics of two very different kinds of finance officers that we've both worked with in the past. For privacy purposes, we're going to refer to them as Dan and Galen. Their offices were side by side in the same dealership, but customers had a very different experience depending on which office they landed in. Dan had some product sales like you'd expect, but he also had a very relaxed approach, never engaging in typical strong arm tactics. His buyers had a pleasant experience. Galen, however, was a very different story. He told so many lies, it's almost impossible for us to fit all of them in one show. <laughs> the kind of finance officer we're talking about today that you need to be prepared for is someone like Galen. His customers got their heads torn off and bought tons of expensive, unneeded stuff. The dealer owner just loved him for it. As always, thanks for joining me, Liz. Sure thing, Kevin. Friends, a customer getting their heads torn off is a pretty gruesome illustration of what happened, but it's not a phrase Kevin made up conveniently for the show. It's actually a well-worn phrase used in dealerships all around the country to describe a person who just got totally fleeced. They were bent over the barrel and had their pockets cleaned out. We felt scummy to be working in the same building with staff who were praised for ripping people off. We're covering this topic today to help prevent that from happening to you. Every once in a while, a car buyer gets lucky and runs into a finance officer who's more like Dan. Right. If this describes your last experience, your timing was great, but it's important for you to know that you just got lucky. <laughs> Everyone yeah. knows that counting on luck isn't a reliable strategy, and it won't help you very much when you run into a guy like Galen, a guy I'm proud to say I helped get fired. I had already been fired from that dealership for being too honest, and working from the outside, I assisted a customer with filing a complaint with the state AG's office. Let me know if you'd like to know more about how that went down. Kevin hit the nail on the head by saying that hoping you'll get lucky isn't a strategy that you should rely on when entering dealer finance. Never. Never. Because most of the time, lady luck just doesn't show up. Today, we're going to help arm you against the finance officer who is jacked up on Red Bull and feeling confident when you walk into their office. This officer is like Galen and is the worst of the worst. Interestingly, Galen type finance officers actually do have an energy drink before seeing you. All the and, time. And they need a little time between customers to get mentally set for a new round of unethical combat and some sort of weird emotional cleansing routine after the last episode. Yes, and many times Galen would come out of his office, hand me a couple of bucks and say, Bring me a Red Bull and then give me 10 minutes and bring your customer in. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> Today's video is about the big contrast in the types of finance officers and the many common lies the true sharks of dealer finance, like Galen, rely upon. You knew you were in Galen's office because you were met with a heavy odor of expensive cologne. Galen getting fired wasn't entirely his fault. The dealer owner demanded this kind of behavior out of him, but that didn't stop the owner from using him as a scapegoat when the attorney general's office got involved. The owner, who I'll refer to as Scotty, informed the AG's office that he learned that Galen had been using drugs and was behaving irrationally. A, a total BS story. Yeah. Instead of facing huge fines and a possible suspension of his business license, Scotty just got to fire Galen and send him packing. The story doesn't end there because Galen suddenly appeared in yet another dealership, also owned by Scotty, just south of there. While it's true that there are a few dealer finance officers who are just straightforward and honest, like Dan, there are far too many gay ones out there. To be clear, there's no crime in making a profit. What we are objecting to are the lies and deceit that are used to set up gross overcharges and ridiculous levels of profit. Most dealer employees fail to understand that. Listen up, friends, because you could be the next one up on the dealer finance chopping block. Here are some of the common Galen-type deceitful claims, statements, and outright lies that he and other dealer finance officers resort to. Lie number one, you must finance through us to get this deal. Sometimes dealerships suggest that special discounts or deal prices are contingent upon using their financing. However, the real deal should not depend on where you get your loan. It's often just a tactic to prevent you from shopping around for better financing rates. If you had taken the time to read the FTC cars rule we mentioned several times, you would have noticed that the lie isn't actually legal. Under the section describing the offering price, the cars rule plainly says, in connection with the sale or financing of vehicles, dealers must clearly disclose the offering price defined as the full cash price for which the dealer will sell or finance the vehicle to any consumer. 
The only costs that can be excluded from the offering price are required government charges, like taxes, license, and registration costs, or inspection or certification fees. This here says nothing about the price being dependent on using a dealer's financing. Line number two, I'm sorry, your credit score was lower than you thought. Yeah. Your credit score is lower than you thought it would be, huh? This is a tactic to offer you financing at a higher interest rate than you qualify for. Never be sitting in dealer finance and not knowing exactly what loan term and interest rate you qualify for. Always know your credit score before going into negotiations and always get pre-approved for a loan from your own bank or credit union. A similar lie to this is you can only qualify for a high interest rate. Similar to misrepresenting your credit score, this statement aims to lock you into a higher APR, the annual percentage rate, allowing the dealer to give you a high buy rate that's significantly padded from the actual sell rate the bank quoted on your loan. One of our car buyers blogs goes into this in depth on thehomeworkguy.com. Again, having a pre-approval can give you a better sense of the interest rates that you should expect. Lie number three, extended warranties and add-ons are mandatory. Dealers might try to include various add-ons like extended warranties, gap insurance or protection packages, suggesting they're already on the car or required for loan approval. These are always optional and should always be considered only based on your actual needs and budget. See our blog post on Tide Selling. Forcing you to buy any extras or add-ons is illegal. Line number four, you have to make at least four payments on this loan in order to keep the rebates. <laughs> While some loans might have prepayment penalties, they are not as common in car loans. This is especially true if the loan term exceeds 61 months. Ensure you read the loan agreement carefully and ask about any potential penalties for early repayment if your loan is shorter than 61 months. Line number five, the loan approval is only good for today. This pressure tactic is designed to rush you into making a decision without comparing other financing options. Reputable lenders' loan offers usually stand for an extended period of time, allowing you to shop around. Line number six, you need a gap policy. Gap insurance purchase here is cheaper than anywhere else. First of all, if you put enough money down, you're guaranteed to not need gap. That's part of the reason we advise 20% down. So the first part of the lie is that it's not necessarily true that you need gap. Also, GAP insurance is never cheaper at a dealership. If you don't know about GAP, read about it on our blog about GAP at thehomeworkguy.com. When it comes to GAP, dealerships always mark up the price significantly. If you think you need it, it's worth checking with other options like an auto insurance company or a local credit union for a comparison. You need to buy now to qualify for the special financing rate. This lie is a classic high pressure tactic. Special financing rates are usually determined by the manufacturers and available for a set period, not just for the day you visit. Could you imagine how stupid it would be if people showing up the next day didn't qualify for the financing rate that they're quoting you? Line number seven, the prepaid maintenance plan is already installed on this vehicle. Yeah. As if prepaid no. maintenance is an insurance policy and it's always 100% optional. In fact, it says so right on the document. There's zero possibility that it could already be on the car. A prepaid maintenance policy could never be on a car that isn't sold because a policy holder must be named first. And that's you, the car buyer. Yep. Line number eight, the banks aren't open right now. So we're going to let you take the car home and call you in the next few days to sign out. This is a statement leading into a spot delivery. Be very careful here. Maybe your credit is a little challenged and they don't want you shopping around while they are busy with other customers. Just know that if they don't get your financing done, you're entitled to 100% of your deposit back and you can just return the car. Line number nine, we got your loan approved, but the banker has some stipulations. Ooh. This lie is convenient because it takes the financing officer out of the picture of being the bad guy for forcing you to spend more money, but mm -hmm. it's entirely false and he or she uses this argument to set up a product sale like an extended warranty or an overpriced gap insurance policy claiming the bank wants you to have it. You can probably see by now that there are so many lies you'd almost have thought we should have done a part two with this, but hey, you're here now, let's keep rolling. It's our goal to make sure we cover as many bases as possible in a single show. Here we go. Finance officer lie number 10. This is a fixed interest rate and is non-negotiable. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> Finance officers love to rely upon deceptive and complicated financial word tracks to help throw off even the most savvy car buyer. If the first nine lies weren't enough, the fun of buying a new car quickly fades when faced with this kind of tactic. If a finance officer does not clearly explain in simple language the terms of the loan, interest rates, and other financial aspects, it's probably time to walk because you'll feel very confused and taken advantage of.
Line number 11, you have to buy now to get this deal. Mm -hmm. Total BS, but the finance office is often where high pressure sales tactics were employed. And you should know these sharks are the highest paid salesmen in the entire dealership for a good reason. Buyers are often pressured into making quick decisions on the stop in finance, taking the joy out of what could have been an enjoyable experience with the right finance officer. Somebody like Dan. Line number 12, add-ons and extras are a great deal, but only today. This is more psychological manipulation designed to get you to think their overpriced products are actually being discounted. Nothing could actually be further from the truth. Extras and add-ons are never a good deal, and if you buy them, they will depreciate many times faster than the car itself. Two to $3,000 spent in the finance office typically has zero real equity benefit to the car itself. Pretty much is never worth a dime. Never. Line number 13, we do hundreds of car loans a month. Your bank only does a few. We know banking much better than they do. The finance officer often has a fragile ego and they want you to think you're sitting at the desk of one of the most capable, experienced, and professional people <laughs> in the car loan business. Yeah. The funny thing is that many finance officers have zero background in real world finance. Line number 14, my job is to get you the best possible deal. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's not their job. Why would they ever want to get you the best possible deal? Who do you think this person is working for? You or the dealership. 100% of their effort will be poured into making this the biggest, fattest deal for the dealership that they can possibly get away with. If they do that, the dealer owner will be very proud and pay them for it. Line number 15, this is what most of my customers do. Dealers know that in general, people like to do what they think other people have done yep. because if other people are doing it, well, it must be the right thing to do, right? So they will make this statement about anything they really want you to buy. That's a big one. Lie 16, my bank owes me a favor, so let me see what I can do. Bankers never owe dealers a favor, and especially not the specific finance officer sitting across the desk from you. Finance officers always want you to think that they have close personal relationships with the banks they use, and they love to present their relationship as the reason that they can offer you a deal. Line number 17, I want to be totally honest with you. Uh, you know. <laughs> Every great liar uses the to be honest with you phrase at some point in the conversation. This is something a truly honest person rarely ever says to you. That's a clue. Yep. Line number 18, we take deposits on Zelle, Cash App, or Venmo. This just happened with one of our channel members recently. It's a major red flag when a dealer suddenly wanders outside the normal policy of accepting a credit card, a personal check, or cash for a deposit, and goes for apps that are typically used for personal non-business related transactions. Line number 19, we can accept over 30% cash down. You see, the more you finance, the more money there is to be made by the dealer, so they don't want you to put large sums of money down on your vehicle. Right. Big down payments also eliminate the need for an overpriced dealer gap policy we touched on earlier, and they want to try to keep the door open to a gap policy sale. Line number 20, we're not making any money on this. Huh. It can shock you to hear this, but it's entirely false, and this is used to push you to give in to more product proposals more often. Manipulating emotions is something finance officers are very gifted at. Some finance officers resort to emotional manipulation, playing on buyers' excitement and eagerness to drive their new car home to push them into agreeing to less favorable terms. Line number 21. I can't believe our manager is letting your car go out of here for this amount. This is a very well-worn word track and can be used during the sales process too to get you to let your guard down. It puts a smile on your face and you feel like you're winning in the midst of huge losses. That's right. Line number 22, this is the lowest rate you'll get anywhere. Ooh, no. This goes back to an earlier lie just from a different angle. Finance officers always want you to think they have close personal relationships with the banks they use and love to present their relationship as the reason they can offer you such a great deal. Lie 23, I can get you your ideal monthly payment. This one's tricky. You may have stated your payment goal very clearly, but here's where the finance officer goes for the first payment bump. Yes, they will actually go for getting you a higher payment than you desired. If you object and act like you leave, they'll say, okay, hold on, let me see what I can do. Line number 24, all you need to do now is sign and drive. <laughs> That's a disastrous road. Yeah. The initial emphasis is speed while actually going very slow to wear you out and maximize product sales. Telling you that all there is left to do now is sign and drive gets you eager for the finish line because it seems like you're being helped. You lean forward with interest and you get hasty about signing documents. Number 25, we can't waive that fee, it's the law. Yeah, that's a total pile of crap. Yeah. Line number 26, I used a coupon to get you a lower rate. Uh, yeah. The first time I heard Galen use this term, I said, let me see that coupon. 
He looked down and just mumbled under his breath. Well, you know what I mean. I'm sure others besides Galen use the coupon line, but you'll never see such a creature. Bigfoot will be easier to find. No joke. Lie 27. I typed it up exactly as you asked me to. Mm hmm With his fingers crossed. This is a different take on the sign and drive lie. Remember how we've said to always read everything in your, in your car contract before you sign? This lie by the finance officer can be interpreted as advice telling you that you don't need to read anything. Sign it and get out of there. Don't fall for it. All right, line number 28. I'm throwing in the extended warranty for free. Pure nonsense. Nothing has ever been thrown in for free, and the finance office has no authority to give things away. They just want you to think that you're getting a freebie. Yep. Lie 29. I'm going to need you to sign here that you're declining this. Getting you to sign for things you're declining is a takeaway tactic. It feels like you should have done it because you have to sign to decline it. Just say no thanks and push it back across the desk. If the dealer finance officer claims that they are required to get your declining signature, ask, by who? The who is their management because it's a proven sales technique. Line number 30. If you have any questions about anything later, just call me. I'll get right back to you. Nope. <laughs> If there's one thing no finance officer wants to do, it's talk to a customer after they left the finance office. They'll never get back to you on anything. To them, you're like a one night stand they just as soon forget and forgetting you is exactly what they'll do. Try to call them and their phone line will always be busy. They are tied up with ripping somebody else off. For sure. Lie 31, we don't accept personal checks. Now that's nonsense. They even accept post-dated checks. Of course. Many times when a buyer needs a bit more cash to make a deal work, the finance officer will bring them in and ask, can you write us a post-dated check? If you say yes, the deal gets done, and the dealer is all too eager to accept your check. We could have easily kept going. Just oh, yeah. remember that almost everything a finance officer says to you is to mislead you, deceive you, and even trap you. With a guy like Galen, if his lips are moving, he's lying. <laughs> Here you are sitting in the office with this one last stop to make, having spent hours agreeing on a price with the salesperson, and you feel committed to the deal, only to find yourself facing unexpected terms and costs in the finance office. This can make you feel trapped, and even though you know you should, you might not want to walk away after investing so much of your own time in the process. Dealers don't want you leaving at this point without a car either. It's called blowing up the deal. A finance officer who goes too far too often and blows up too many deals eventually gets fired from that dealership. To maintain the excitement of buying a new car and ensure a positive experience, as we've always said, it's crucial for buyers to do their homework ahead of time. Understanding your financing options, knowing your credit score, and being familiar with common sales tactics can help you navigate the finance office with confidence. Remember, you have the right to ask questions, request clear explanations, and if necessary, walk away from the deal that doesn't feel right. Blow up the deal and watch that dealer scramble to fix it. If this all sounds like too much hassle to navigate on your own and you're, and you're needing a confidence boost, you can get direct assistance from us by visiting our website today at thehomeworkguy.com and get signed up for a membership right away. We do love working directly with our members. The reports of the great deals that you guys are getting right now with our assistance is very inspiring. That's right. We greatly appreciate the opportunity to work with all of you. Thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. On behalf of the entire Homer Guy team and the amazing Elizabeth, I'm Kevin Hunter. Thanks for listening. You can't go. All the players are going to die.